pjnet.tv. It is 9 p.m. on the East Coast of the United States, and you are watching our bumper as we go down the checklist. Yes, we are recording, we are streaming, and our chat room is waiting, and we have a live first time guest standing by in our green room. We'll start a countdown to Studio 14. Started now. Well, good evening and welcome to PJNet.tv. I'm your host, Coach Prasic, as we start the uh, home stretch coming to the end of year 2021, ready to welcome in 2022. Speaking of welcome, uh, we have a first-time guest with us tonight, and I think that you should prepare yourself to be blessed and hear an inspirational story that is still being written, by the way. She's quite, the, she's quite a young lad for most of the folks that come on our program or old farts like me, but no. Uh, Tammy comes to us uh, from her home, and uh, Taylor... I, I, I'm going to put your name on the screen so I'll remember. My wife and I were just talking about Tammy over dinner. Uh, that's, anyway, Tammy's going to help my wife. Anyway, um, Taylor, to give you the rundown on who she is, she says that she is a writer. She says that she is a photographer. She says that she is a musician, a teacher, and an abuse survivor, but I say none of those things define who you are. That's right. <laughs> so where, where, where did it all begin? Well, you know, our identity, you know, doesn't come in who we are or what we do or who the world says we are. It really truly comes um, in knowing who we are in Christ and that relationship. So I guess, I mean, with that, I could just jump in um, to my story, if that's okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, you know, I'm going to talk about a little bit about my book that I'm writing. It's called um, Limitless Vision, Surrender to the Unseen. And uh, like Mark was saying, it's the story that's still being written. Um, isn't that our life? You know, we go through different seasons and different chapters and um, it's a beautiful story of how um, God can redeem anyone's life and their past. Um, no matter what you go through, your past doesn't have to dictate a negative future. Um, so I, I guess I will share how um, I went through um, sexual, emotional and psychological abuse growing up. And for the longest time, I allowed that abuse to dictate who I was and what I could do. Um, and it really impacted my self-esteem in a negative way. Um, with that being said, I built walls because I felt like emotion was a bad thing. And to protect myself, I built up walls around me and stopped showing emotion. Um, in reality, <laughs> you know, when we build walls, it doesn't only, it doesn't actually protect you. It harms you because now you're isolated and you're um, taking yourself away from other people and allowing people to enter in into your pain with you. And so for a long time, I struggled alone um, until, you know, one day I kind of reached a rock bottom and I was acting out in self-harm behaviors because I didn't know how to express myself in a healthy way. And I kind of gave the Lord an ultimatum and I said, Hey God, like I'm done. If, if you don't help me here, I'm done. And the beautiful thing is, is my story didn't end there. <laughs> he literally plucked me out of the miry clay and put my feet on solid ground and said, here, your story doesn't end here. And I have so much, something so much greater for you than you can even think or imagine. And that's kind of where we are today is, you know, the Lord is so beautiful and 
he can turn anything that the enemy meant for evil for good. And that is my testimony is, you know, I, I have a past. <laughs> we all have pasts and we all, um, you know, some of them were, some of us are still in it. Um, but it doesn't have to end there. It doesn't have to dictate where we go or what we can do. And so, uh, but something I really want to focus on today is not, it's not the past. It's not the pain. It's not the enemy. We're focusing on God and how beautiful he is and how a life of faith is so much greater than a life of fear or living in your comfort zone. Something the Lord has revealed to me in this chapter is how he didn't call me to live a safe life or a life within my comfort zone. He has called me to live a life based on faith and faith alone. And what that means is being willing to surrender my need to understand or control the world around me. And that's kind of where I'm at today is, you know, I moved, I live in North Carolina and I moved to North Carolina uh, uh, let's see, August of 2019. And it was a complete act of faith. The Lord had revealed to me back April of 2019 that I was supposed to move to North Carolina and, ex and accept a job out here. Hmm. And I said, okay, he gave me confirmation. I asked for it. He gave it to me. And so August came and I was like, all right, I'm moving to North Carolina, signed the contract with a school district because um, I teach children who are blind. And then it's revealed to me that I'm accepting a position that was not meant for one person, but it was actually meant for two or two and a half people. And I was a first year teacher. And I said, Lord, how, how am I going to do this? And I started to doubt. And this is where faith comes in. Sometimes the Lord calls us to have faith despite having understanding. And so I said, Lord, I don't know if I can do this. Are you sure? And I could have stayed in Arizona where I'm from and accepted a job out there. And the Lord said to me very clearly, it's not my highest for you. I have something so much greater, so much beyond what you can even ask or imagine, but you have to act in faith and trust me. And so with that, I was like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> deny that. <laughs> and so, and I had learned up to that point that it was so much better to trust the Lord because the Lord is already in the future. He knows what I'm going to face tomorrow, the next year, the next five years. He knows what's going to come. And I don't. So who am I to say, I know better and I'm going to take my life in my own hands. And so I moved out here out of an act of faith, not knowing how I was going to get through my job and um, being visually impaired. I can't drive and I don't know anyone. And so there's a lot of fear, um, but there's also a lot of faith mixed in. And the faith was greater than the fear. It did not control me. And so I moved here and little did I know, I thought I had worked through so much of my trauma, <laughs> but you know, the Lord takes us through seasons. And when I moved here, I discovered that North Carolina was home to one of my biggest triggers to my sexual abuse. But I didn't know this <laughs> until I moved here. And, you know, I'm still working through that trigger and still working through a lot that has resurrected. Um, but that's the beauty of it is that my story doesn't end here. Like, yes, it's hard. But I have faith and I know that I am victorious because I serve the one who is already standing in victory. And so um, the Lord has been revealing to me just in um, this season of my life of North Carolina is that um, we, you know, again, walking in faith, trusting that no matter what you go through, it's worth it because he's holding our hand, he's by our side, and he's not going to give me something more than I can handle. He knows that I'm ready to enter into that healing. And so um, the beautiful thing about all of this is that um, when we make 
one effort, one act in obedience to faith, it's a domino effect. And, um, you know, if we choose to not act in obedience, it can impact, um, you know, that those later events. And an example of this is, you know, I moved to North Carolina in faith. And after I moved here, I, that trigger was revealed. Well, now I have to face this trigger and work through it. And that was August of 2019. In November of 2019, um, a new memory came back. I had part of it, but I didn't know the rest of it. And it came back and I had to process it. But when I got it, I was more mature in my faith. So I pushed into the Lord more instead of pulling away like I used to. So I sought the Lord and said, okay, God, I know that when the enemy attacks me, it's because I'm a threat. It's because he knows that something big is coming. I may not understand it. I may not see it, but the enemy sees it and he's threatened. So now he's going to attack. But I also have the faith and trust that God can use all things for it for good. So I tr trusted the Lord. I pushed into him. I had nightmares, but I kept reading scripture, worshiping. Actually, that year, I played my guitar every single day and I worshiped. And that's how I got through it. So May comes and another memory comes back. And again, I worship. I read scripture. I pray. And I give God all the glory because that is the only way I could get through it. Um, you know, unhealthy coping mechanisms don't do us any good. I learned that many years ago. So I just kept pushing into God. And the thing is, <laughs> is it was worth it because that summer, um, summer, let's see, uh, June of 2020, I go home to Arizona to visit my family. And um, I had some anxiety about it because I had a feeling I knew the enemy was attacking me. I was having nightmares and I knew that something big was coming. I just had no idea what that big event was. So I'm in Arizona and I get a message on Facebook from one of my abusers. And um, it was the abuser whose memory came back in November and the beautiful thing about all of this, again, is that because I sought the Lord in the midst of that memory in November, several months prior, I was in a different place in June. I was in a place where I said, okay, God, what do you want? My flesh was saying, run away, hide. Why would you ever message me? How dare you? What do you want? I mean, that's a trauma response. But because I had been seeking the Lord um, out of desperation, because he's the only sustainer I have, um, I was in a place where I could say, okay, God, what do you want me to do? I know what I want to do, but that's not your plan. And he says, do you trust me? And I said, yes, of course I trust you. And then he tells me, I want you to accept the message on Facebook. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I was not expecting this answer. <laughs> but I said, okay, God, I trust you. I know that you are for me and not against me and that you would not put me in harm's way. And so I accepted the message. And long story short, he says that he has a daughter now. And that if anything happened to her, like it happened to me, he would kill someone. And that he was young and immature and wanted to fit in with his friends. And um, he should have defended me. He should have protected me. And he didn't. And he was so sorry. Hmm. And he just said, I am so sorry that I didn't protect you. And he said, I don't know if you can find it in your heart, but could you ever forgive me? And in that moment, I was like, what? <laughs> like, what is happening? Like, I just could not believe that. I was living to hear this. I never imagined I would ever hear an I'm sorry. And, and so I said, Lord, how do I forgive him? And he said, I forgave you mm -hmm. so that you 
forgive those who have hurt you. Right. And that was so like eye opening to me because how many times have I hurt the Lord? How many times have I, um, you know, chosen sin over him or, you know, idols in this world over him. And yet he's taken me back every single time. And so I, and he said, you're not the judge of him. I am. And so I said, okay, God, here we go. And so I messaged this person and I said, exactly what the Lord told me. And I said, I'm not the judge of you. The Lord is, and he forgave me so that I could forgive you. So I want you to hear this right now. I forgive you. Hmm. And then we talked about God and I said, where, you know, where's your relationship with him? And he was telling me about how distant God was from him and he just couldn't feel him anymore. And I said, you know, I ended the conversation with, you know, I pray that you can find hope and freedom like I have through Christ. And that's where we left it. And I haven't talked to him since, since, you know, June of 2020. And after that moment, I was like walking on clouds. Like I didn't realize how heavy the weight was that I was carrying for so long because it was, I had carried it. Um, and at that moment I was like thanking the devil because if it wasn't for him attacking me, then I wouldn't have been so strong mm. in my relationship with the Lord. But it was also because of my maturity with the Lord. I had that experience with God knowing that you know, I knew his character and I knew that he could turn anything that the enemy meant for evil for good. And so, you know, I thank the devil for strengthening me, for a, getting me to a place where I would be ready to um, receive that message. Now, if this happened like 10, 11 years ago, I would have <laughs> my relationship with God wasn't where it is today. Um but I am so thankful just for God's faithfulness and how he is just, you know, always in the details and he's always in the midst. Um, and just, you know, being able to witness this storyline that God is building. Um, you know, I, I would have never seen this if I had not continued to trust the Lord, making that first decision saying, okay, God, I will move to North Carolina. Okay, God, I will trust you in the midst of these nightmares and these memories. Okay, God, I will accept this message. Like all of this is an act of obedience and faith and in trusting that God has a bigger plan. Um, and sometimes it's hard because we want to live in fear. We want to allow our flesh to dictate our actions. We want to understand how something is going to turn out, what the outcome is going to be in order for us to act. Um, I used to live that way. I used to want to understand how things worked, um, understand what the outcome was going to be before I chose to uh, make a decision. But that's not faith. That is acting out of understanding. Faith is the opposite of understanding. Faith is despite your knowledge, despite your understanding, you will act, um, even if it is hard. And so, um, I am still in the midst of that healing. Um, uh, my story is not done yet. My chapter, my North Carolina chapter is not done yet. And that is, you know, sometimes it's hard because I want to be at the end of it. <laughs> I want to be in that complete healing already, I want to not struggle anymore with past hurts, but I am filled with hope um, in the midst of it all because I know that you know God is in the midst of my my pain now, and He's in the midst of the future, and He knows what's coming and He's preparing me for it. And you know, there's there's hope that my chapter doesn't stop here. And that I have victory, even if I don't always feel it. So um, I hope that encourages you guys just knowing that no matter what you're going through, no matter what the world throws at you, I know we've gone through a lot of hardship in the last couple of years, 
but knowing that God is in the future. He is already in 2022, which I can't believe we're already in 2022, but he's already there. It doesn't matter what happens in the government. It doesn't matter what happens in our lives. Yes, it's we want to understand it. And yes, um, it's hard. But if you continue to walk in faith and trusting that God is in control, even if you don't feel you're in control, he is in control always. And He's no, he knows what's coming. If you can walk in faith and trust that, then no matter what comes your way, no matter what happens, you will always succeed because we are victorious through Christ Jesus. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. <laughs> um, we're, we're already a minute over, but I didn't want to leave without uh, finding out. You know, you, you found yourself transplanted in North Carolina yes. uh, in a school. Uh, you, you don't know anybody. You're legally blind. You can't drive. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing all these things in the chat room from Doug Carter and from Barbara. And if Sherry Lynn were here, I know she'd be saying, but but you had to make some boundary to exclude those that hurt you, that were hurting you. But now right. you've you've allowed a new set of people inside of those boundaries and it all happened pretty quick. So how did how did you wind up at a at a lunch date with Doug and Barbara and Sherry Lynn? Well, so I decided a couple years ago to well, I've always wanted to write a book. And I never knew if I'd actually step into that um, challenge until a couple years ago, actually right after that person messaged me and asked for forgiveness. Um, I heard the Lord said, now is the time to start writing your book. And so I, um, I don't even remember where I, what website I got on, but I found Sherry Lynn and I sent her a message and said, Hey, do you want to, um, I would, I'm looking for a ghostwriter, someone to help me write my book. And I wasn't looking for someone to actually write it for me because I love writing, but someone to basically edit my book and guide me in the process. And so um, the Lord was totally in that. And, you know, Sherry Lynn um, wasn't sure she would have the time even to um, help me. And then one one morning I was going to just one night I had made the decision and said, told my parents that I was like, I'm I just am going to message her and say, like, I don't have to start. I can wait a year. Like, but I feel like you're the one that's supposed to help me write this book. And I woke up the next morning and I actually had a message from her. And she said, you know, um, I, I feel like the Lord's told me that I have to help you write your book. So if you can wait a couple of weeks, then I can help you. And I was like, what? Like I ran out of the room and went and told my dad. I was like, dad, you're never going to believe this. Like she mail emailed me first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like the Lord was totally in it. Um, now I work with another editor, Joyce. Um, but Sherry Lynn and I have are still really good friends. And she's, you know, we do talk often. And so she came to North Carolina and said, hey, I would love for you to join us one day um, for lunch. And so I couldn't go home for Christmas and it worked out that, hmm. you know, I could go. So that's how I ended up actually meeting Barbara and um, Doug and everyone. And that's how I got here today. <laughs> what a story. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, Taylor, you've not only got an, uh, an amazing story, you tell it so well and with such maturity. And, and, you know, I don't know how old you are. I won't put you on the spot, but you are, you possess both wisdom and maturity beyond your years. I can say that safely. And, and well, we you. appreciate you sharing your story with us here tonight. And we hope that you'll uh, join our family from time to time. Hope you'll visit the chat room. I, I'm seeing a few nice things being said about you there. So, but, okay. the, but Taylor, thanks so much for, for sharing with us tonight. You're an inspiration to all that hear it. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Glad to do it. Well, folks, if that doesn't kind of inspire you, you may want to check your pulse. Um, as good as that was, it's not over. Uh, at the bottom of the hour, we have Casper joining us from the great state of Colorado. And he's got, uh, looking back, sort of a look back at 2021, the top 12 or the bottom 12, depending on how you look at it. Can't wait to get into that and unravel it then. Until uh, the bottom of the hour, I've got a few things to do 
among them is this, is to ask you to challenge yourself like this. Here it is. What is the boldest thing that you've ever done for Jesus Christ? Got that? Okay. I don't know how hard or easy that was, but the follow-up question is the harder one. How long ago was that when you did it? You see, if we're going to have faith, we're going to have to have courage. And if we're going to have courage, we can't let ourselves ever be satisfied with our answers to either of those two questions.